Farshaw. People also know me as Julie Morris. However, I prefer being called by my traditional name, given to me by my grandmother, Julia Colbreth. I want to share with you my unique perspective on being the first Indigenous Learning Transformation Specialist here at Coast Mountain College. I feel it's my responsibility to share with you some highlights from the 2021-22 school year. The college serves the educational needs of communities throughout the Northwest region. I thank these nations for the opportunity and privilege to gather, live, learn, and work in their territories. So here we are along the coast. I'm here today in Lahaine, also known as the Prince Rupert, or Prince Rupert campus. That's the coast Simshian. In Terrace, we have the inland Simshian. Over in Haida Gwaii, we have the Haida. And then um, further on up the line there, we have Niska, Heisla, Kitsan, and Wet'suwet'en. And of course, our, our close by neighbors at Teltan. Before I go any further though, I would like to share with you a couple of definitions. So let's take a look at indigenization. Indigenization is the collaborative process, process of naturalizing indigenous intent interactions, processes, and making them evident to transform spaces, places, and hearts. In the context of post-secondary education, this involves including Indigenous perspectives and approaches. Decolonization. Decolonization is the process of deconstructing colonial ideologies of the superiority and privilege of Western thought and approaches. Decolonization involves valuing and revitalizing Indigenous knowledge and approaches and weeding out Western biases or assumptions that have impacted Indigenous ways of being. So there are a lot of definitions for both of those words, but I, I like to think of Indigenization as language and awareness. And I think of decolonization as removing barriers so indigenization can happen. So let's pretend that you're going to help me plant a rhubarb patch in my backyard. So we chose that spot because it gets the sun in the morning and it's also shaded. It's shaded by trees in the back. So it doesn't get that hot afternoon sun. So to get the area ready, we remove some of the larger rocks, we pull out those dandelions and some of the grass, and you know we get the area ready so that we can dig a hole for the plants. So what we're doing, of course, is we're clearing the site or the patch so that the rhubarb can grow, where First Peoples can grow their plants, if you will. A uh, one way that somebody explained it to me was like clearing a, a hiking trail or a pathway, um, getting out those things that get in the way. So I indigenized that because I, I wanted to stay away from using any type of word like, you know, clear cutting or um, removing the trees. <laughs> so COVID-19 increased people's engagement with online and virtual learnings. I've done my best to create community for faculty to share their learning journeys, ask questions, and recommend resources. So what you're looking at right now is the First Peoples Information and Resource Center, and faculty have access to this on Brightspace. So this space continues to grow and evolve, and I put in here, um, resources and supports that have been recommended to me and I also do my best to make sure that there's content here um, that is relevant to the first peoples that we that we work with and serve in this Northwest region and of course first peoples across Canada but our, our focus truly is the the six nations and our our neighbors uh, the Teltan as well So faculty have had access to um, virtual offerings and we offer at noontime, uh, myself, Kaw Shaw, and 
Adam Nash, who is a um, learning transformation specialist in the cult department. And we like to spotlight um, First People Scholars. And in addition to that, we also host our own workshops about maybe uh, how to make a uh, territorial acknowledgement. And what's really important is learning about the First Peoples principles of learning. But we had some guest speakers in. So this year, our speakers included Yuna Ann Moyer. She's Taltan Clinket artist, and she's also my cousin. And she came in and she helped us when we uh, discussed Indigenous awareness and cultural appropriation. And then we had in Dr. Charles Menzies, and he's a UBC professor. He's also from the uh, Gagatla Nation, and he grew up here in Lahaine, and he's the author of People of the Saltwater. So he came in and he did an author's talk about his uh, book. And then <laughs> we had in Sarah Davidson, and Sarah Davidson is a Hydra settler who is an assistant professor at SFU, and she came in and put on a workshop about evaluating indigenous, indigenous resources. So I don't know if you follow her on Twitter, but you should if you'd like to find out books that she's read and books that she recommends that have anything to do with First Peoples or Indigenous Peoples. And then we had Linda Gray. Linda Gray is from the Simshian Nation, and she's also from um, the Simshian along the coast. And she's the author of First Nations 101, and with a you know bunch of things that we should know about um, First Nations. So she came and she talked about her her second edition because it's expanded and revised, and that was just released this month. I still don't have a copy, but I've got some um, in the mail. So in addition to these uh, gatherings, we also had training sessions that, that were facilitated by um, Tatalia of Nahaini Creative. And she came in and she talked to us about cultural protocols, empathy, and safety. And she's a, a Squamish uh, decolonial facilitator and uh, strategist. Most of our workshops, they're closed just to faculty. Um, because that's my role here is to to uh, support faculty. However, we do open up seats. I do open up seats. So if uh, uh, any other college employee wanted to attend, or uh, they can just let me know, and I would put them on a wait list. And you know, about a week before any type of this training, I would let you know if there was space. We just had in Elaine Alec this month, and she facilitated training about cultivating safe spaces. And she's a, an author, a political advisor, a teacher, a spiritual teacher. And that session was open to um, people other than, um, than faculty. So, but in addition to these supports, I work with curriculum developers who want help with indigenizing their course outlines before and during the articulation process. And I have uh, begun to work with other instructors who are just looking to indigenize their pedagogy. So by providing faculty with a dedicated support person who is First Nations, the college provides a level of educational sovereignty unmatched in faculty support. My mom, Kathy Thompson, and I are members of the Teltan Nation, and my dearly beloved father, Wally Thompson Sr., was a member of the Gitsan Nation. I believe we are all united in our desire to reform pedagogy so that it's better for all of us. I was taught that once a person receives the teachings, there is the responsibility to share those teachings with others. From my lived experience, witnessing the transformation of instructors over their reconciliation journeys has been inspirational. 
Watching those who have engaged in indigenization and decolonization here at the college has given me a deep appreciation for the power of inclusion in post-secondary institutions. Just in closing, I'd like to say that um, I'm not a content expert, the, the, the faculty that I work with are, so I just do my best to be a guide and to uh, help you come into my garden, um, because I love rhubarb, and so that we can make things together, like some rhubarb pie, rhubarb crisp, that idea. So um, the site's been cleared, the plants are there, and it's just a matter of getting in and um, harvesting when the time is right. So, madu for listening, all my relations.